In the Gospel reading today, our Lord talks about the fact that there is this householder that is going to be returning from a wedding. We have to remember that the Jewish weddings were not like ours. So we might say, okay, somebody's getting married next Saturday, gonna go to the wedding, have to leave the house probably around noontime. I should be back someplace in the evening, no problem. Now the Jewish weddings were a week long and you didn't know when somebody was going to come back from it. Was he going to stay there for a day, two days, three days, a whole week? Did he have to travel to get there? I mean, they don't, didn't have cars like we do where we can scoot across town at 70 miles an hour. And so they really didn't know when to expect the master to return. Could have been anywhere in that time. And that's exactly what our Lord is telling us. He has gone forth to a wedding banquet which is what heaven is. And we don't know exactly when he's going to return. But what we do know is that when he returns, he expects to find us doing what we're supposed to be doing. For the servants, that's just doing their work, whatever that meant for them to do. And so it is for us. Are we maintaining our spiritual life? Are we living a moral life? Are we striving to to grow in holiness? Are we being obedient to the duties of our state in life? Are we doing those things that God would expect us to be doing? Because that's what it all comes down to. Remember, if we heard that the Lord was coming back and we suddenly decided to make ourselves look all impressive, you're not going to fool him. He's God. He already knows that you're totally unimpressive and now you just put on a show to look impressive. In other words, he's gonna come home and he's gonna realize the house hasn't been cleaned. Nothing has been done, the place is a disaster. And yet, you looked really nice at the front door. Well, big deal. You're gonna be in trouble. So he's looking at us and saying, all right, I've left and I am trusting you. That's the real issue. He is trusting us to carry out what it is that we're supposed to be doing. Now we could look at that and say, that's pretty stupid. But you know what? Parents do that all the time with their teenage kids. That's really stupid. No, it's not. Not if they have taught them they should be able to expect that they would trust them. And they would leave the kids home with their younger siblings and expect that things are going to go well. That's exactly what God is expecting of us. Now it may seem to us a little foolish that he would actually trust somebody like you or me. That's not the issue. He's taught us. We know what we're supposed to do and now he's trusting us to do it. So if that's the case, now we need to show ourselves to be trustworthy. We need to show ourselves to be responsible. And there's really only one way to do that. I mean, you can do what you need to do just out of a sense of duty or just because you don't want to get in trouble when the master returns but there's only one real way of doing this, and that's to love him so much that you're going to do this because of love. You're going to serve him because you love him. That's what this is all about. That's what he did for us, and that's what he continues to do for us, and that's what he's asking us to do in return. So now, if you look at it and say, all right, he's gone to a wedding because he's the bridegroom. That's why he went to the wedding. He just didn't go as a guest. He's the groom. And guess what? You are the bride. So should the groom trust the bride? Would that be stupid? To think that the groom ought to trust that the bride is actually going to do what she's supposed to be doing? No. He loves his bride and she loves him. 
And that's why they do what they do. That's what God is asking of you and me. We're members of the bride of Christ. The wedding banquet is in heaven. That's what we're preparing for. So yes, here we are servants waiting for the master's return. But we've been promoted. We're the bride. And it's our beloved that we're waiting for. That's what we have to really look at. Number one, is he the beloved of my soul? Number two, do I love him so much that I will serve him just because he is lovable? And that's what I want to do. I want to serve him, and that's what he's doing for me. That's the nature of love. It's a two-way street. Two people giving, two people receiving. So that's what he's doing for us 24 hours a day. That's what we ought to be doing for him 24 hours a day. If we are, when he comes, he's going to find everything in good order because we're doing everything out of love for him. If we're doing it just out of fear or whatever, it's not going to be in good order because our disposition wasn't in good order to begin with. So that's what we want to really look at, striving to love him and in loving him to serve him. Isn't that what it's all about, to know and to love and to serve God in this world so that we can be with him forever in the next? That's what it's all about, to be his beloved so that in the next world we are members of the bride, that we will be at that wedding. And the wonderful thing is the wedding banquet of heaven will never, ever end. It's not just a day, and it's not just a week like it was for the Jewish people. It's for the rest of eternity. That's what he has for us if we are willing to serve him in this time. The reward is for eternity. So pray about that. Really look at that. Look at how much he loves you. And then ask yourself how much do I love him? And do I love him so much that out of love for him, I will serve him now and for eternity?